Hi, welcome to another video. I hope you like it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's go to the video. Toyota GT86 The GT86 is a sports car that's relatively unique in its sector. Apart from the Subaru BRZ it's 99% identical to, of course. There's no turbocharger, very little chassis tech and some deliberately skinny tires. Its primary aim isn't grip, nor luxury, nor cocooning refinement. Its primary aim is fun. Its whole recipe is decidedly old school. There's just one engine, a 197 brake horsepower 2.0 liter 4 cylinder, and it drives only the rear wheels, through a three stage stability control system but no complex rear wheel steering or the like. While you can have an automatic gearbox, you shouldn't have it. The standard six speed manual is very good and far more in keeping with the car's ethos. You'll work it hard to drive this car quickly, mine. Maximum torque, a fairly thin 151 pounds FT, doesn't arrive until 6, 400 RPM, a mere handful of revs before you reach peak power. But so long as you keep things above 4, 0, 0, 0 RPM, the GT86 does feel usefully brisk. And its modest power matches modest grip, so quite often, particularly when it's grimy and wintry, you won't be wishing for more muscle. Which is probably why the car's been on sale since 2012 without any power upgrades. Its midlife facelift brought a big round of updates, though these were pretty mild. The suspension was stiffened, the aerodynamics tweaked and the stability control given an additional mode, while the headlights became a bit jazzier. The subtle kind of facelift that proved the car was pretty blooming good in the first place. While the GT86 is a sports car first and foremost, there are sops to everyday life. It has two small back seats, though they'll happily accommodate shorter adults, and a decent-sized boot, while the warranty is massive and reliability ought to be a given. Those skinny, oversteer-inducing tires should be pretty affordable to replace too. Thankfully. The GT86's only real rival is the Mazda MX-5 and its Fiat 124 Spider cousin, and Toyota's developed a similar penchant for special editions. There have been TRD versions dotted through the GT86's life, with bigger wheels, stickier tires but still no more power, while more recently there have been special color editions, the recent blue edition adding a performance pack with beefier suspension and brakes. And yeah, still no more power. The simplest and most exciting Toyota in years is also a real pleasure to drive. Despite being relatively cheap, strongly warrantied, and with bags of equipment as standard, the GT86 might fail the showroom test, it's simply not as shiny and lovely as an Audi TT, VW Golf GTI or second-hand Porsche Cayman. But that's really not the point. There's a wonderful depth to its engineering that makes it worth every penny if you like cars for the way they drive and the satisfaction they give you when you really dig into their abilities on a challenging piece of road. It says a lot that Toyota took a whole five years to update the GT86 and kept the changes so light when it did. This is a fundamentally great car that may not look or feel especially modern, but that's sort of the point. As the car world advances towards plug-in this and autonomous that, it's a line in the sand for old-school fun. What is it like to drive? The GT86 is a fantastic little coupe. Light on its feet, eager to change direction, it also rides beautifully and has delicious brakes. The offbeat flat 4 engine is sweet and best of all, it's joyfully well-balanced when you turn off the stability control and have a bit of fun. Even the electric power steering is masterfully good, especially with the smaller, neater steering wheel of the facelift. While an MX-5 is forgiving, with lots of body roll before it starts to move around, the GT86 is a level up, with slightly snappier reactions and a need to be a bit more on your game. But it's still a relatively friendly introduction to rear-wheel drive sports cars. You need to be smooth to get the best out of the GT86, and if you're not, it will frustrate. But for us, one thing connects the very best driver's cars on sale, they all make you try to be a better driver. The more commitment you put into driving them, the more they come alive, so you focus on upping your game to allow the car to up its own. Caterham 7, Porsche 911, Nissan GTR, and this little Toyota. They all sharpen up as you do. It's an addictive relationship to get into. Even with its sub-hot hatch levels of power. 
The GT86 launched in the greatest Japanese tradition of being a base car, when you buy relatively cheaply and then modify yourself. Indeed, it's only a short online search before you'll find videos of 1000 BHP plus cars with an utter disregard for tires. While those are obviously a touch extreme, it shows that this might not be a car you merely lease for a couple of years and move on from, here's a car that'll take a little while to master, and one you can continually modify once you feel you're getting on top of it. There's longevity here. What is it like on the inside? It's all nice and simple in here, with low set seats and a perfectly positioned steering wheel that nestles into your hands as naturally as the stubby, slick shifting gear lever. The rev counter is positioned right in the middle of the dial pack, proudly showing its 7400 RPM redline, although there is also a nod to sophistication with the availability of color touchscreen navigation in the center of the dash. Just don't go looking for the delicate finish of an Audi TT as that's not what this car is about. Instead, it's again about simplicity and focusing on the driver. Pride comes in the fundamentals, not the soft touch details, flip the seat forward to put bags, or a child, in the back, and it won't return to your driving position. The 2017 model year upgrade brought tweaks to the infotainment system, it's still a long way off more premium rivals, TFT instrument displays with many nerdy graphs and some nicer materials, while that dinkier steering wheel gained audio controls. Given the absurd number of steps and volume available, we managed to turn the stereo up to 50 before it got too loud, and there was still further to go, the button on the steering wheel becomes really fiddly, as you have to press it so much for even the slightest adjustment. Like we said, don't focus on the finer details. What should I be paying? Yes, you can buy significantly higher tech hot hatches for the same money, but their center of gravity feels like it's stacked on a roof rack in comparison. Toyota has spent the money where it matters, the oily bits, and this remains a brilliantly set-up car for £25,000. Toyota sells 10 times as many GT86s as Subaru does BRZs, so sourcing one of these and getting the good deal should be much simpler. Its claimed 36.2 miles per gallon is close to attainable, even when you're having fun, while the warranty is 100,000 miles or 5 years, whichever comes sooner. Very generous for a car that begs to be driven so hard. If you're buying new, keep an eye on the special editions. Most add some minor mechanical upgrades, suspension, brakes, wheels or tires, beyond their fancy new color, and most look worth the extra outlay the demand. Just don't expect them to be worth any more money when you come to sell. When a car is designed from the outset to be modified, you aren't going to stand out with upgraded components that already have some wear and tear. The GT86 is the current budget mid-performance car of Toyota. Here are some some interesting facts about the Toyota GT86. Subaru manufactures the GT86. Subaru is the actual manufacturer of the Toyota 86. Subera is a Japanese car manufacturer owned by Toyota. So, the 86 are only badged as Toyota but they aren't a Toyota. Boxer Engine the ADS AXS have 2.0 LTR boxer engines which are really rare. Boxer engines give the 86 lower point of gravity for better handling. Typically, the engine layout has cylinders arranged in two banks on either side of a single crankshaft and is otherwise known as the boxer engine. Hashtag Lushish everywhere. The Toyota 86 has the heritage of 86 written all over it. The number 86 is showcased in the logo along with boxer diagram. The diameter of the exhaust pipes of a GT86 is 86 mm. The radius of each piston block of the boxer engine is also 86 mm. Thank you for taking the time to watch the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Goodbye.